Kim Jong-un, madman ruler of North Korea, evil dictator, and, well, a rather portly man who stands in stark contrast to a malnourished population. Despite a major economic upturn in the hermit kingdom, the sad truth is that most of the meager economic benefit has not gone to the majority of the population, but rather to those such as the elite few allowed to live in Pyongyang and the senior ruling party leadership. Though exact figures are impossible to ascertain due to the secretive nature of the country, North Korean defectors claim that malnourishment and at times outright starvation are still common throughout the nation. On top of this, the CIA confirms that the nation is unable to grow enough food domestically to feed itself. So just how is Kim Jong-un so rotund while the rest of the nation starves? As mentioned, the CIA publicly states that North Korea is unable to grow enough food domestically to feed all of its people. While normally this isn't great news for a country, it's almost never catastrophic. Plenty of nations around the world don't grow enough of certain crops to feed their own people's demand for those items. Those shortfalls are made up with international trade. For example, the US produces far more wheat than it consumes, and it is in fact the world's largest exporter of wheat, making up over 15% of global wheat exports which it sends to nations lacking this crop. Unfortunately for North Korea, however, international sanctions against the nation have stopped the import of many foodstuffs, leaving the nation mostly to fend for itself. During the Cold War, North Korea was in effect a client state of the Soviet Union and heavily relied on Soviet imports to feed its people. However, after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, food and fuel imports were stopped. And worst luck of all, just before a major natural famine struck the nation, Estimates range from between several hundred thousand dead to as many as three million, and North Korea quickly began looking for new support. Yet with international condemnation against North Korea over its nuclear ambitions, the abducting of South Korean and Japanese citizens, and general bad behavior, there weren't many nations willing to take the tiny murderous kingdom under its wing. That's until China's ambitions to push the US out of the Pacific led it to nurture a deepening relationship with the Hermit Kingdom a long-time thorn in the US's side. For China supporting North Korea and propping it up with food and materials exports was a win-win. It prevented the nation from descending into chaos, which would prompt a massive refugee crisis across its own border. And it made sure this stubborn thorn would stay permanently lodged in the US's side. Yet even China and its international ambitions have their limits, and after North Korea's successful nuclear tests, not even the Chinese would withstand the international backlash against their pet state and so they too began to cut off trade with North Korea. The effects were devastating and sadly, just like UN sanctions, impacted most of the poorer populations living outside of the gilded city centers. Kim Jong-un dug his heels in, however, and turned to that age-old North Korean pseudo-religion of Juche to encourage his people. Juche is a philosophy of self-reliance enacted by Kim Jong-un's grandfather Kim Il-sun, an international villain from its inception. North Korea had faced sanctions and trade restrictions from the start. While Soviet aid poured into the country every year, Kim Il-sung was determined that the nation would stand on its own two feet. Thus, Juche was born. A philosophy of necessity, Juche instructed the people to bear the hardships they suffered and to always work to help North Korea be self-reliant. The nation should not depend on any outside aid for help and should produce all its own fuel, food, and materials needed for modern life completely on its own. Sadly, this proved to be unrealistic, yet Juche continued to thrive and in fact helped ensure the Kims would stay in power. Thanks to Juche, mass starvations and hardships were not the fault of poor leadership, but rather an indirect attack by a hostile world. By appealing to nationalistic fervor, Juche helped the Kims hold on to the reins of power. Yet North Korea was never truly as broke as it would appear to be. In the 1970s, Kim Il-sung created a secret government organization that would come to be known as Office 39. By setting up a string of companies around the world, Office 39's goal was to bring in hard currency to the nation. But instead of going to meeting the needs of the people, it would all go straight to the dear leader. This secretive organization continues to operate around the world, bypassing international sanctions against North Korean businesses, by posing as other nationalities, and engaging in both legal and illegal trade. Today it's estimated that Office 39 brings in up to 2 billion US dollars a year. To make money for Dear Leader's personal spending habits, Office 39 engaged in things such as selling ginsengs, gemstones, and gold internationally. To bypass sanctions, the operatives would smuggle goods from North Korea into China and then pose as Chinese. According to one defector who worked in the organization for five years, it was easy to smuggle goods into China because their border is wide open and the Chinese have generally only cared about North Korean refugees. 
While no direct evidence has ever linked the Chinese to Office 39 activities, it's well known that the Chinese have for a long time turned a blind eye to their puppet state's illegal activities. And there are deep suspicions about how up to $2 billion in illicit international trade could be orchestrated by the North Koreans inside Chinese territory without the Chinese knowing about it. In all likelihood, China not only knows but facilitates the act, taking a cut of the profits for itself, a form of tax on Kim Jong-un's slush fund, which the dear leader is obligated to pay. Office 39 also engages heavily in counterfeiting narcotics and arms sales. North Korea's forgery of US $100 bills were the most accurate fakes in the world and came to be known as super notes. The massive forgery forced the US to immediately issue a new $100 bill with improved security features. Office 39 also engages in the sale of narcotics such as amphetamines and opioids, which are produced domestically and shipped all around the world, even to the US. To round out the drug trade, Office 39 also ships weapons to buyers around the world including the sale of items banned by international law, such as ballistic missiles. In 2013, a ship was detained in the Panama Canal when it was discovered to be smuggling weapons and parts of ballistic missiles. And while its Chinese owners feigned ignorance, it's widely believed that they were simply yet another front for Office 39. Office 39 is estimated to account for 30 to 40 percent of the total North Korean economy. And it's not content with simply exploring both illegal and legal goods. As the world has wised up to Office 39 schemes, it's become harder for them to generate money, which has led to the organization now turning its eyes inward. It's reported that Office 39 has seized on every profitable sector of the North Korean economy, everything from marine produce to mining to textiles, and has monopolized it, sending a sizable portion of the profits to the dear leader. In exchange, this money goes to fund Kim Jong-un's nuclear program and helps ensure that he remains in power by the time-honored and thoroughly corrupt tradition of North Korea's gift politics, a practice which ensures that the current dear leader stays in good graces of potential political adversaries and enemies. Gift politics involves the giving of lavish gifts by the dear leader to subordinates, funded by the government itself. In essence, the Kims have for years been buying the loyalty of the politically powerful around them, with funds meant to see the needs of the North Korean population. With the world's largest collection of liquor and lavish decadent parties and ceremonies, it's no surprise Kim Jong-un is still packing away the pounds even as his people suffer and starve. North Korea has for decades suffered under the most grievous levels of internal corruption imaginable, with each subsequent dear leader lining their own pockets while the people starve. What will happen when Office 39's money begins to run dry though? Also check out our other video, How Cruel Is North Korean Leader Kim Jong-un? As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.